it is not an easy way, but it is a quick way to address the need. Tonight, we're taking a look at homelessness in Oklahoma City. The city's now taking steps to address affordable housing issues with a new innovative option that's taken off in Texas and California. The Oklahoma City Housing Authority wants to convert a Motel 6 near Bricktown into studio apartments for those who are experiencing homelessness. Fox 25's Peyton May explains. This is the first time we in Oklahoma City that we are doing a motel renovation into a um, supportive housing. With a $3.7 million price tag and $2.2 million in renovations, this Motel 6 will soon be converted into 75 studio units of supportive housing with project-based and Section 8 vouchers. It's a great thing because you can move a lot faster to renovate a current property than you can to build new. The property is part of the MAPS 4 funding project to address homelessness in the city. Those at the Housing Authority and Homeless Alliance say this site is geared towards helping those who are experiencing chronic homelessness. It's people that have been homeless a long time or are homeless over and over and have a disabling condition. The key to this project is the on-site wraparound services. Yeah, the services range anywhere from life skills, so learning how to be a good neighbor, all the way up to mental health services. It's not just about building housing, but making sure people stay there. And the plan for that includes community spaces, on-site offices, and even a dining room and kitchen that could provide employment. And that commercial kitchen really is intended to serve as a workforce incubator for the residents. Reporting for Fox 25 News, I'm Peyton May. The Housing Authority will acquire that property next month, and they're hoping to start renovating in the next 9 to 12 months. The OKC Housing Authority was selected earlier this year to operate the MAPS for Homelessness Project. It aims to expand the network of housing for people experiencing homelessness by nearly 2,000 housing units, including the construction of 150 workforce homes in high-cost areas. MAPS 4 budgeted over $55 million for affordable housing options in the OKC market, and the initiative has the potential to leverage more than $400 million in additional housing funding from other sources. A lack of affordable housing is a big problem in OKC. According to data from the Oklahoma City's Housing Authority, nearly 30,000 household income earners and their families are waiting to move into public or Section 8 housing. The data also shows 35,000 units are needed for low income families. Oklahoma may be perceived as one of the more affordable markets, but it's really it's really all based on what your salary is. So if you're if you're making minimum wage, uh, seven twenty five an hour, your your the gap is huge. You you have to work like two full time jobs to afford a one or two bedroom apartment. Oklahoma City's annual count of its homeless population was released earlier this year. The point in time count was conducted on January 26th and found 1,436 homeless people in the city. That's a slight increase from 1,339 in 2022. The city does this count every year to provide a snapshot of homelessness in our city. But last month, Councilman James Cooper told us the actual number is a lot higher. But when you look at something like our uh, homelessness management information system, those numbers get closer to around 12,000. These are people who are accessing, for instance, our emergency rooms uh, for services. The point in time count surveys people in emergency homeless shelters, transitional housing facilities, hot meal sites, crisis facilities, and encampments. It does not attempt to count people who are staying in hotels, treatment facilities, emergency rooms, jails, or people who are considered couch homeless. For me as a former middle school teacher uh, for OKCPS, it even gets more troubling, right, because we have around 3,000 of our students who are experiencing homelessness. And unfortunately, uh, the HUD definition of homelessness doesn't include what we call couch homeless. So these are people who uh, are housing insecure and actually might be sleeping uh, on the furniture of family members or of classmates. And uh, unfortunately, that point in time count misses them. The founding executive director for the Homeless Alliance says a third of the city's total homeless population are people who are chronically homeless, meaning they've been homeless for a year or more and have a disability. It's a problem, he says, is unique to the Sooner State. Oklahoma 
as a state, has historically underinvested in mental health care, substance use prevention, and substance use treatment. And so, um, when you when you put those along with poverty and lack of housing affordability, that leads to more chronic homelessness. The point in time count also found 9% of our homeless population are veterans and 20% are members of families with children. According to the survey, 11% are 24 years old or younger. The survey also found 54% were staying in a shelter, 13% in transitional housing and 31% were unsheltered. When there's a big crowd of them and just trash all the places. Business owners in Northwest Oklahoma City say people who are experiencing homelessness are leaving trash on their properties. Fox 25's David Chasanoff spoke with one company who says this situation put them in legal trouble. David. Yeah, Wendy Taylor Morris with JMB Graphics tells me she received a violation notice telling her she has to clean around her property or else she's going to get fined. Thank you for the city of doing nothing for us. On October 10th, Oklahoma City leaders gave Taylor Morris this notice, telling her to clean the alley next to her building that's surrounded by trash. But she claims the garbage isn't hers and is coming from people in the area experiencing homelessness. Not going to do it. So you, you find a solution. You figure out how to fix it. Because I've asked you to try. Warren Burchard faces the same issue just a couple buildings down. Over and over and over again, it's like I don't, I have to be responsible for their trash. He says this makes people not want to visit Northwest First Street. It's definitely not good for business, it, and it impacts everyone's business around here. Just a couple blocks away, Dan Strawn with the Homeless Alliance offers a message to nearby business owners. I understand the frustration. There are mechanisms in place that you can call on, us being one, the street outreach number, the city's action center is a really good resource. Strong says this is a situation that requires patience. We're not gonna fix it overnight. We're, as a community, taking a lot of the right steps. Though Morris is becoming restless as she has reached out to the city for help for years. Falls on deaf ears, so you got, you figure it out. <laughs> I don't know what else to, Tell the city other than JMB Graphics will not be cleaning up their problem. We heard from the city about this. They tell us in part the city empathizes with the property owner, but landowners are responsible when illegal dumping happens on their property. This includes alleys. And they tell us development staff tried brainstorming solutions with Morris in October. Reporting live in Oklahoma City, David Chazanoff, Fox 25 News. All right, David, thank you. And according to the Family and Youth Services Bureau, around 4.2 million young people experience some sort of homelessness. That alarming statistic is something the Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services is working to change. They held a resource fair last month aiming to prevent homelessness by providing essential services. In general, homelessness is rising, uh, homeless youth population is rising in Oklahoma City. Um, anytime that we can keep people from entering our homeless systems to begin with, that way we're not adding to that already strained system is best. Um, and so that's kind of why we at the Department of Mental Health, we're working with our partners to build our capacity to work upstream to prevent homelessness from beginning. Um, while other systems are working on managing the homeless problem, we are trying to help prevent it from growing. Resources at the fair ranged from mental health providers, housing providers, youth shelters, and more. Nonprofit group Pivot works with Oklahoma City to help homeless youth. The organization's Family Junction Center provides a temporary living place for youth in need between the ages of 12 and 17. They offer meals, counseling, emotional support, and the ability to attend school, tutoring, and social activities. The organization also has a community intervention center offering assistance to youth brought in by law enforcement. It helps connect them to needed services like food, clothing, housing, medical, counseling, counseling or mentoring. The center also helps them understand court proceedings and connects them with community service facilities. The group also builds tiny homes for homeless youth to live in. 
Pivot opened the first houses in their tiny home communities back in 2019. They're all located on a 12 and a half acre campus, which has staff on site 24 7. Pivot says they also provide opportunities for youth to learn necessary life skills to become self reliant adults with a plan to achieve long term success. Winter temperatures have moved into OKC once again, and to help meet the community's need, winter overflow beds will be available overnight at several homeless shelters in the city. There are eight overnight shelters in OKC. Each one is open every night throughout the year, but this winter overflow space opens up during freezing weather. This Saturday is Family Volunteer Day at the Homeless Alliance. You can sign up to make holiday cards or prepare winter items. The holiday card volunteer event takes place from 8.30 a.m. until 10 a.m. The winter item prep takes place from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. You can sign up for either or both of these activities on homelessalliance.org. Just click the Get Involved tab and select Become a Member become a volunteer rather. And that was your big story breakdown. You can learn more about homelessness in Oklahoma City right now on OKCFox.com. And if you missed any part of this big story breakdown, you can find it all on our YouTube channel. Just scan the QR code on your screen or search OKCFox.